Genesis chapter 2, verse 4. These are the generations of the heavens and the earth, and of the earth, when they were created in the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens. May God bless the ring of his word. Bible smack. <laughs> All right, so I'm kind of doing a little bit of a follow-up, and I'm promoting a blog I just did. And this is the historical argument for God. Now, it's not quite as snazzy, but um, basically, when we're trying to argue about does God exist, usually we think of like, oh, well, I've got a hypothesis. Oh, here's my God hypothesis. Or this is my position. Does God exist? But as opposed to uh, trying to figure out uh, whether or not we have a rap rational proposition or whether or not, um, you know, we have a good hypothesis, God is a fact. And he is a historical fact. He is a historical character. So, in that verse that I read to you, that's uh, dealing in Genesis chapter 2. Um, really just covered uh, chapter 1 and, you know, the seventh day on top of that. So, what you see there, it says that these are the generations. In the Hebrew, they call it the toldoth. And basically, it's symbolic of a, of a plaque. Okay. And... Um, Basically, when you look at Genesis, you'll have these. These are the generations of this. These are the generations of Adam or Noah or etc. etc. And so, basically, uh, from what we gather, Moses, who's considered the author, actually composed the book of Genesis from these various tablets that were kept in the Hebrew lineage, okay, or in the family of the Jews. So, um, this was a historical account. Now, how do we know that God created the world in seven days? Well, because God told Adam, probably told Moses, might have told Noah, and God is a person. Adam talked to God, Eve talked to God. There was even some interaction with the devil. And then there was Cain and Abel. God keeps on showing up later, which is okay because God is a spirit and not a human being. But God did personally talk. And he was personally witnessed to. How do you know somebody existed? You go on, somebody has a Facebook profile. You don't know if that profile is the real person. They could be making it up. Sometimes they do. But basically, um, God personally interacted, and he was witness to. There were eyewitnesses' accounts of God. And so we trust God at his word that he created the world in seven days, and it was laid out in a historical manner. But what I do in this um, article that I wrote is um, I show that this was... A historical observation and what I do to prove that instead of arguing with liberal theologians because arguing with theologians is like arguing with lawyers instead of going to lawyers I go to judges and in this case the judge would be the historians so I use the works of Philo and Josephus and I also have um, the Annals of the World by Archbishop James Usher to bring that one in. I also have cameos with Herodotus and the Dead Sea Scrolls. And I even bring a little bit of Eusebius, okay, um, in talking about the deity of Christ. He talks a little bit about creation. So, as these historians develop... Uh, you can see how they handle it within their worldview and what angle they're using. And it's interesting because Philo 
is a great character to kind of study. Now, this is a big book. It's about 900 pages, okay? But basically, he is an Alexandrian Jew from the first century. That's important because as Alexandrian, he uses a lot of allegory. But he still believed that there were six days in the creation period. Okay. Um, also, he is living in Egypt. So when we start addressing the situation, what if Moses wasn't historical? What if the Jews were never in Egypt? That comes into play. Also, there's testimony uh, that I got from Usher where he quotes from different Roman historians and I think a few Greeks and they you know give credence to the Exodus and this is one of those deals where um, the lost world this is a mental disability in the lost world because if you talk to them they wouldn't normally think this way unless they're part of academia and what I mean by that is that um, there is no handle on history. History is considered loose and whatever in academia. And even the pagans and the atheists agreed on this principle. And I, I bring that one out in the article. But basically they don't have a handle on what history is or when it was and getting everything down. But yet there is a specific chronology to creationism. Um, I will use many different witnesses. Not only this stuff, I use the Apocrypha, and I use the Pseudepigrapha, and I use the Koran. Why? Because they're all witnesses of this idea of a creator and creation. I even go back, and I'll be honest, I used Wikipedia, okay? But basically, uh, I went to Wikipedia and uh, found under the title Creator Gods, I found 36 different uh, pagan deities that were maybe not monotheistic, maybe monotheistic, just depending. But they were the god that's responsible for all creation. And as we go through all these different gods of all these different countries that are the creator, okay, singular, uh, they're mostly male, okay? They're mostly creating everything. They are also, um, at times, doing judgment, especially doing a flood judgment. So, all of a sudden, you start to find these things coming together. And then, we start looking at the flood. Not a whole lot, because it's a totally different topic, or just such a huge topic. But basically, uh, we talk about this idea of the flood, and what you find is that these pagan histories can go back to about 5,000 years as far as a genealogical, um, consistent, historical chronology. But then they stop short, and they have stories about floods, but they're not connected. But you see, in the biblical history, we have a story of a flood, and it's accurate because the model of the ark has been tested. And there's a group that I bring up uh, from um, some physicists out in England, or the United Kingdom, who are able to find a feasible ark. And there's other places where they've done this as well. So the other uh, pagan mythologies about their floods, their boats don't work. This one does. And so you have this connector and all of a sudden you start to see, okay, well, here's the Tower of Babel. And that's where our uh, buddy Herodotus came up. But um, we have Babel, we have genealogies and all that kind of stuff. And all of it makes sense. You also have uh, records by Romans and Greeks that the Egyptians were not as old as they claimed to be. And that's very important. Uh, history is important because it was we're talking about the witnesses back then. It's an observation instead of a theory, okay? So, when we uh, approach the science in a scientific worldview in an overarching theory, okay, then you have to have a hypothesis. Shouldn't you have an educated hypothesis? Thus, you would need the history, okay? The history will inform you so that you can make your hypothesis. 
And so that is the proper place, okay? A fact is not something that you need to debate. A fact is a thing that is observed. Catch you later.